Hello, I'm Christabel. I'm a member of the education team and the visitor engagement team at the Ulster Folk Museum based in Coltraw. Most people come to the Folk Museum, the number one thing that they look forward to doing when they arrive is to try some fresh soda farls straight off the griddle. So people are missing that and I thought it'd be a really nice opportunity actually to show everybody at home how easy it is to make soda farls from your own kitchen. So in terms of the ingredients for soda farls, all you need are some plain flour, some buttermilk, some bicarbonate of soda and some salt. And in terms of equipment, you need a measuring cup. One of these one cup measures is just the ticket or a set of scales if you want to be more exact. Wooden spoon, spatula, teaspoon. And we're going to be using our nice modern um, electric hob today or your gas hob. So you, all you need is a heavy based non-stick frying pan. And in terms of preparing your dough, easy to do in the kitchen. Just do it on your worktop, nice clean worktop, or if you've got a separate baking board. So the first thing you need to do for your soda farls to make your dough is to add your plain flour. So what we want to do is two cups of plain flour. So each cup is approximately about 100 grams. So if you want to measure out with a set of scales, then that would be 200 grams of plain flour. Our next ingredient is bicarbonate of soda. Now a lot of people think bicarbonate of soda sounds very, very modern, but in fact it was actually invented about 100 years ago and it uh, was rapidly then introduced into Irish kitchens as a popular raising agent. So into the flour we want one teaspoon of bicarbonate of soda and you want to break that in nicely just so you don't have any lumps. I'm just going to mix the bicarbonate of soda through there. Our next ingredient is salt and we basically need about half a teaspoon of salt into our dry ingredients. And again, just mix that through. So nicely mixed through. And then we're going to make just a little bit of a well in the middle. So our final ingredient that we need to um, put into the dough is buttermilk. And we're going to look for about a cup of buttermilk, but it may vary depending on your flour. So even if you just add slightly less than one cup to begin with. And so a cup of buttermilk would be about 200 ml if you wanted to measure it out. So we're going to pour that into the middle and give it a good stir. Basically what we're looking for is a nice soft dough that comes together easily as you stir around the bowl with your spoon. And you can tell right away actually that that's probably not going to be enough buttermilk because I'm going to add a wee bit more. And making soda fars is not like cakes in terms of you don't have to be exact. What you're really looking for is the kind of feel and look of the dough. So you can see already that that is just coming together into a nice ball. It's not sticking to the bowl. I think that's maybe a little bit sticky. And as I was saying, that's no problem if you need to add either a bit more buttermilk if it's too dry or a little bit more flour if you think it's too wet. Because we don't want it to be too sticky because the soda bread cooks really quite quickly. And the wetter and stickier it is, the longer it's going to take to cook. So just adding a wee bit more flour And that looks about right. So now what we've got there is a nice soft dough. You can see that there, nice and soft. And because there's no yeast in it, we don't want to be overworking the dough because basically the bicarbonate of soda is your raising agent. So at this stage, all you want to do is really shape it into a bit of a ball. 
like so. Put a wee bit of flour onto your baking board, like so. And then turn out your dough. And again, just shape it into a nice round, like so. So we can see that's nice and puffy and soft. And there's no need to use a rolling pin. So for soda farls, what we want to do is just flatten it into a round to about a quarter of an inch thick. So keep shaping and patting. And if you find that it's a wee bit sticky at the top, just add a wee bit more flour there. Now you noticed actually, before I started flattening it, it was in a ball shape, and that's actually how um, you do a soda loaf, which would just go straight into the oven. So if you wanted to keep it as a loaf shape, just shape it into a ball, and then we cross on top and pop it into the oven. The reason for the cross on top is to help you break it into four easily once it's cooked, and also a little bit of a superstition in terms of people were very superstitious and always worried about things like um, witches and bad spirits and things like that and they felt that a cross on the top of their bread would keep the devil out of their baking. So there we are, we're into a nice round and it looks like to me about a quarter of an inch thick and again you don't really need to worry about it being too perfect. This is traditional bread, it's not heading for an artisan bakery so we're all right. And then what we need to do is, at this point, we need to cut it into four. Okay, so we have our nice flat round and we're cut, going to cut it into four because obviously our soda farls are always in the traditional triangular shape. And an interesting fact for you is that the word farl is actually um, based on an old Scots Gaelic word, fardel. And anything in a fardel meant to be cut into segments or portions. So fardel then became a farl. So anything in a farl is cut into pieces, particularly quarters. So there we are, easy peasy. There we have our dough ready to go. Four nice soda farls, about a quarter of an inch thick. And you can see they're not too sticky in the middle. So nice and soft, really easy. So all we need to do now is transfer them into the kitchen to pop them on your hob. So I've got a gas hob here and I put that on a sort of low to medium heat. What I'm going to do is I'm going to sprinkle a little bit of flour on my pan. That will just be to stop the bread from sticking and the pan goes on the hob. So obviously in the museum we're operating on a open turf fire and with a crook, a crane and a griddle. And one of the reasons we would put flour, you'll see a sprinkled flour onto the griddle. Um, and that is basically a good way to check the temperature because obviously in modern times here we have our little dials and switches and things like that which can tell us what temperature but when you're working with an open fire there's no real way of controlling the temperature all otherwise by just moving the griddle up and down so we bit a flour onto the pan and when the flour goes nice and golden brown then you know that your griddle is nice and warm so all we have to do with our farls at this stage is just pop them onto the pan. So pretty quickly, um, it'll start to puff up a wee bit. So keep an eye on it. Don't wander off and um, stick the telly on, just keep a wee eye on it. And then after a couple of minutes, what we'll do is we'll have a wee peek under each side. And if it's looking like it's going to go, it's going a nice golden brown, then we can flip over the farls. So we're probably looking at about sort of five to six minutes each side. And if we have a wee look at the farls in the pan, you can see they're pretty much doubled up in size. And I've already had a wee look under here, but if you have a wee check, you can see they're starting to go nice and golden brown. So now is the time to carefully turn them over. I don't recommend using your fingers the way I am, but after years of baking on a griddle in the Folk Museum, I don't think I actually have any sensation left in my fingers. So please do be careful when you're doing this. So now we can see that they're nice and golden brown on this side. And you know you've kind of done them enough on the first side. So if you give a wee tap with your fingernail, if you've got fingernails, it should sound nice and crunchy. If your fingernail 
sinks in, then you haven't quite done them enough. So I was about seven, si seven minutes on the first side. These are probably gonna maybe take another five minutes on the other side. And then what we'll do again is we'll just have a wee look at the edge and if it's golden brown. And then we'll check and see how they're doing. Okay, so the soda foils have been um, turned over and they've been cooking for another five minutes on the other side. So we'll, let's have a wee look and see what they look like. So you just get your spatula and have a wee look. And there we go, nice and golden brown. Let's give another wee turn. So there we are, so they are looking really good. So a tip to see if your bread is actually ready is to lift it and tap it. And you can hear that nice hollow sound. That means that they're cooked, okay? But a little tip that I learned from one of the uh, visitor guide bakers in the museum who'd been baking for maybe 30 years is to always finish off your soda farls on their edges. As you can see here, still a little bit doughy on the edges. So on the griddle, we would always park them on their ends for a couple of minutes. And then once each end is kind of golden brown, then flick them over. And if you didn't do that quite often, what you find is you end up with like a wee doughy bit in the middle. So this is a really, really good idea. So we'll have a wee look and see. So you can see already there that that started to kind of brown a wee bit. So we'll just give them a wee turn again on the other edges, just for a couple of minutes, like so. And it's a wee bit of a balancing act trying to get them to perch up like that. So we'll give them another wee minute. So you can see how much they've actually, remember they started at about a quarter of an inch thick now they've doubled in size and they're really looking really nice and puffy and golden brown. So then we go this way. And this is the tricky bit to try and get them to, to rest there. So that'll just finish them off nicely. Okay, so while that's doing that, the last thing we need to do, I know it's really, really tempting as soon as they come off your pan or your griddle is to dive straight in. But we always wrap them in a tea towel for about 10 minutes. Two reasons for that is just to let them cool a bit slightly so you don't burn yourself. And also if they're wrapped in a tea towel, they're continuing to cook just for another few minutes. And that really does avoid that annoying doughy bit in the middle. So at this stage, they're looking nice and brown all the way around, nice and hollow. So we'll just turn off our Bob, and I'm going to put them into a tea towel. Like so, and they smell so good, they really do. There's nothing like fresh soda bread. I'll just wrap them up there. I'm going to rest them for about 10 minutes, like so. So, those look really, really nice, really lovely. So, they're best eaten on the day you make them. But of course, if you do happen to have any left, you can always fry them up for fry the next day or just pop them in the toaster. So perfect, so there we have a nice open texture, nice and soft and fluffy. And traditional way to eat them is obviously with a bit of nice butter. So I hope that has um, inspired you to try making soda farls at home. Beautiful.